Hello and welcome to Loppy Loves. On this channel I talk about my life as an immigrant living in Iceland. In today's video I wanted to share with you the story of how I ended up living in Iceland. Uh, this was a blog post on the blog that I used to run, Loppy Loves, and this was my most popular post. Within the first 24 hours it got over 600 views. It was very popular. It was also picked up by another blog, which I think was called Girls Gone Global. And the owner of that blog asked me to rewrite it so that she could publish it on her blog because she loved the story. And now I'm gonna share it here on my YouTube channel. So it all started back in 2016 when I was 22 years old. I was working as a jeweler, which was my dream job. And at the point that this story begins, in 2016, I was working at a regalia makers. So it's making like medals and badges. And I really was happy at that job. Um, I really got on with my colleagues. I loved the factory that we were in. It was a really old building and it just felt very old fashioned and old timey. And I really liked the atmosphere. And also in the Joy Quarter in Birmingham, there's a good community spirit. Um, and it's just a nice place to work. And at this company, we also had really nice working hours. I think we were the first company in the Joy Quarter to finish work on a daily basis, at least on Fridays. I can't remember the exact times, but I think the working day finished at 4.15. And on Fridays, it finished at 1.45, from what I remember. I might be wrong, it's been like five years, but I think that's how it was. And I also just find that work very fulfilling. Uh, it's really nice being able to help make something, see the finished product, and then send it out into the world. It's, it's a really good feeling, in my opinion. I really enjoy it. But the downside of that job was the money. It did not pay well. It was unlikely to ever pay well, really. Um, and I was living alone. At this point, I had recently broken up from my long-term boyfriend who was the first boyfriend I lived with and I was trying to make ends meet and it was very difficult. Uh, the wages were barely enough to cover rent and bills and food and I was having to work overtime every day um, besides Sundays, sometimes on Sundays, just, just to have some money. Uh, I couldn't save anything, I couldn't make any savings but I, just to make ends meet and just to pay everything. I was working on average 65 hours a week, roughly, which was way too much. I was working six days a week. I also hadn't been abroad in years. I think I went when I was 20, I did go to Tenerife for a week and a half, um, but that wasn't really somewhere I wanted to go. That was my boyfriend's choice. And before that, I hadn't been abroad since I was 16. Even though I loved to travel, and I did want to go travelling, I just didn't have the time because I had to keep working overtime and I needed the overtime money so I couldn't miss out on it. And even if I wanted to go away, I just couldn't afford to pay for a holiday anywhere. And then the Brexit referendum happened in, I think, June 2016. And the UK decided to leave the EU. And suddenly I realised that I needed to start travelling and seeing Europe because I didn't know if we'd need a visa to start travelling at some point in the future. And also, I had always dreamed of living abroad one day, but I kind of thought it would be like when I was in my 30s and settled down, I would move abroad, which looking back now was kind of stupid. Like, if you want to move abroad, you should do it when you're young, before you've settled down. Um, but suddenly Brexit happened and my future, uh, future ability, I guess, to like, live abroad and travel, um, was potentially in jeopardy. I didn't really know what was going to happen. And I had an app on my phone that I used to scroll through sometimes called Holiday Pirates, which is a UK app and website which puts together like holiday deals for cheap. Uh, I used to just scroll through it but never booked anything because like I said I couldn't really afford it anyway. But within the weeks after Brexit, I found myself scrolling through Holiday Pirates on a little break I was taking in the silversmithing workshop at the company I was working for. And I saw an offer just pinged on my screen while I was scrolling, which said the land of fire and ice or something along those lines. And I clicked on it 
and it said a three night trip to Iceland to see the Northern Lights and it had always been on my bucket list to see the Northern Lights and I just I just felt drawn to this I didn't know anything about Iceland really like I knew that there was a volcanic eruption that had disrupted the air travel when I was younger and I had seen Iceland in Eurovision but that's all I knew <laughs> I thought it was north of Finland um, that's very, very much the wrong direction. And I also had a friend who was planning a trip to Iceland uh, and she had told me about And I just clicked on this deal and I impulsively booked it. It was so impulsive. It, I think it was £500. It was a lot of money and just something in me just said book this deal. It was for two people. And I just texted my mum after I booked it and said I'm booking a trip to Iceland let me know in the next 10 minutes if you want to come so I can put your name on the tickets and she texted me back immediately saying sure she was surprised but she just said okay okay let's go so the trip was the end of November beginning of December in 2016 my friend ended up going to Iceland I think two weeks before me she came back and told me all of the wonderful things that she'd seen and she was like you're going to love it Lauren like it's, it's totally your place but she hadn't really seen the Northern Lights properly, even though she'd gone on the trip three nights in a row. And I felt really disheartened by that, because that was kind of the only reason that I was going, was to see the Northern Lights. So the time to go on the trip came around, and we were flying from Luton, and we stayed in the Easy Hotel the night before, which is the hotel that EasyJet, the company, owns. Uh, that was an experience, <laughs> but I really like EasyJet, the company, it's my favourite airline to travel with. We flew with them, and like I said, I hadn't been abroad really in years, and I was terrified of planes, and I kind of really regretted booking this trip before we got onto the plane. I was like, yeah, I just didn't feel excited, but we went, we landed, and I still wasn't really impressed. We got to the hotel in Reykjavik, and I just wanted to get out and explore. And I was completely blown away, I was shocked. I wasn't expecting to enjoy it that much, I wasn't expecting to love this trip. I just felt at home. Um, it's really difficult to describe it, but I just felt that this was where I needed to be. And on the second day, I booked another set of flights for me to visit by myself one month later for New Year's Eve. And I came back for a week I had a fantastic time and I was just learning so much about Iceland. One of the things that really intrigued me was the language because I love languages. I studied French and Spanish at school and Icelandic was just completely different from anything I'd seen, like just the length of some of the words. It was just amazing to me. And in that trip I did meet a guy, we were never a couple, um, but we went on a few dates. Uh, again when I came back to Iceland another time as well um, and talking to him as well the culture just seemed exactly where I needed to be I remember I think on our first date I asked him uh, about the surnames or he was telling me about the surnames here about how people don't really have family names it's just named after their dad and then they add son for a boy or dotty for a girl after and then I asked him about uh, when couples get married then do they not change the names and he was like no and I had never wanted to change my name when I got married, which you don't have to in the UK, but it's it's more common that you do. And I was like, yeah, okay, this, this is a good place for me. I really like it here. And when I got back from that trip in January, I decided that I was going to move to Iceland. Like I just had to try it, even just for a few months. So I got back, I think the day that I got back, I saw that there was an Icelandic TV show that had been on while I was away on one of the UK channels but it was still on catch up. I went online, found an Icelandic online course, which is what the University of Iceland offers for free online. I just went through the entire course and then watched this entire season of the show. <laughs> it was like eight hours, I think, um, just to listen to the language. And I just started studying the language at home uh, and just started looking for ways to move there that wouldn't cost that much money because I couldn't really save anything. I did have a little bit of money from my mom from when she had sold her house um, but it wasn't a huge amount and I did have a credit card because some of the money that my mom had used to sell the house I had 
used to go on a property investment course and on that course they had told me to get a credit card so I did. So yeah, I didn't really have a lot of money to move with and I knew I wouldn't be able to save up that much money. But I was determined to move to Iceland. And I ended up finding a volunteering opportunity on a website called Workaway. And I ended up contacting a family uh, in Kvergevi. I wanted to live in Reykjavik, but there wasn't any opportunities really in Reykjavik. So it was just the closest place I could find. And I ended up going back to Iceland in the March or April to, well I just wanted to meet the family first in person um, and also I just wanted to go back to Iceland because Iceland and I ended up staying with them uh, at the beginning of May is when I came to Iceland and I stayed for three months with them for the whole summer and it was lovely and the reason that I wanted to do that as well was because I wanted to know what it was like to be in an Icelandic family in case I ended up moving here, loved it and settled down here, I wanted to know what family life was going to be like in Iceland. Because I would hate to like settle down and then years later when I started a family find out it was just completely against everything I believe in. But yeah, it was a nice experience. And yeah, so at the end of the three months I, I just wanted to stay in Iceland. I needed to be here. By that point I already had a boyfriend as well. Um, so I was just applying for any job I could. And it's, it's better to apply for jobs like before the summer begins because a lot of job opportunities are in the summer. So I wasn't applying at the best time, but I did manage to get a job as a cleaner in a hotel. It was a terrible job. <laughs> I was only there four months, but it gave me a Kenetella, which is the ID number you need for like everything in Iceland. And it gave me some income. And how I got through the three months of uh, living with this family in Krogadi, I just had my credit card, basically. I had a tiny bit of money left over from what my mum had given me, and I would just make the minimum payments on the credit card every month and use my credit card to pay for anything. I, I tried not to spend a lot of money, but if I did spend, I would just use my credit card. So then I just had to find somewhere to live and managed to find somewhere in Reykjavik, luckily. Hardly had enough money for the deposit and the first month's rent. I think I ended up having to borrow a little bit of money off my mom just to cover the last bit of the first month's rent. So yeah, in the end, I managed to max out this credit card I had. And this credit card had a £4,000 limit. And it was terrifying getting myself into that much debt with no guarantee that I was going to be able to pay back. Like, if I had been earning that money in my job as a jeweller, I would never have paid that credit card off. There would have been like no chance for me to pay that off. And it was scary. But I paid that credit card off within a year. Within a year, I managed to pay it off. And it was a huge risk that I took moving here with a credit card. But honestly, it was the best thing I ever did. I don't have any regrets whatsoever about getting myself into that much debt at that point in my life. And now I have no debt, and I have savings, and I'm able to save, and my life is so much better here than it was in the UK. Um, especially now that the cost of living crisis is in the UK, and people are struggling even more financially. I don't know what I would have done had I been there right now. And even though I have a job that I don't really enjoy, um, I have started my jewellery business on the side and I am slowly building it up so hopefully I will be able to fully work in my career again one day. And I would love to one day be able to go back to the UK and teach or do some workshops in the jewellery industry, especially in the Birmingham Jewellery Quarter because it is a place just so special to me. Um, it's one of the things I miss most about the UK is working in that area because it's just such a lovely community and a lovely place. So yeah, that is the story of how I moved to Iceland. Um, it is a little bit crazy and at the time everyone thought I was insane because I was just doing this, it was so spontaneous, just like yeah I'm moving to Iceland and everyone was like you are what? You're crazy. Um, yeah, it was crazy, it was spontaneous, it was also the best thing I ever did. So that's that story. Um, yeah, I don't know why I haven't told it on this channel before actually. Uh, yeah, so anyway, like this video, comment below uh, if you have any spontaneous stories of doing something crazy like that, or if you think I'm insane, if you think I made a bad move, a good move, 
uh, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and I will see you in the next video. Bye!